Next, we head for the famous horizontal waterfalls. An extraordinary natural wonder, where two large bays empty and fill through a pair of narrow gorges in the Kimberley Escarpment country. With up to a 10 metre rise and fall in the tide, the power of the water has to be seen to be believed. At peak flow on the mid-tide, the water is running at around 10 to 15 knots, forming some pretty hair-raising rapids with up currents and whirlpools everywhere. There she is, mate. So that's the first one. That's awesome. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Not really sure whether we should be taking our boat through that. What do you reckon? I'd go through there in a rubber dinghy at the moment. That's perfect for the rubber dinghy. What's your plan, Stan? You gonna hit it? Go straight down the guts? Yep. Are you gonna pick that line there? Yep. Stay on the gas. And that'll get us through to the second. Yep. All right, let's do this. Going in. Now, the tourist boats that run these rapids are purpose-built with far more buoyancy, and the biggest difference is two 300-horsepower motors. With less than half the horsepower, we've got to be extra careful, because with all this white water, the motor really struggles for thrust. The turbulence okay. Set your eyes Now that, Simon, is the wide one. This is the narrow one. This one's barely wide enough for this, the length of our boat. We might refrain from hitting that one. What do you think? I don't think we need to risk that. But we do get to have a look at it. The narrow gap is deadly, and even the tour boats can get in trouble here. Over the years, there's been plenty of accidents and lives have been lost. Now, these boats don't go through when the water's in peak flow. And given that it's the biggest tide of the month, we'll show some uncharacteristic caution. That is pretty, that's a pretty impressive stuff there. Like I've seen some rough water and we've been through some rough, rough water just recently. But that there, that's crazy. That's, that swallows boats up and spits them out, chews them back up again and spits them out. And that's just breakfast. Suck us in there. That's some serious mother nature action going on there, right there. And just sitting here has got my adrenaline pumping off its nut. We're in the centre bay and we've got to get back out again. Whoa. Little do we know what lies ahead. Going in, that's the easy part. It's not too bad, but going back out, that's where she really stands on its head. And the problem is you've got this massive volume of water trying to force its way through, and the water comes up and pushes up and spins around like this. And if you get a side, we get something coming from the side, tip us on our side, and then if we cup that water, boom, it's all over. The force of the water will roll us, and that'll be the end of it. We'll be swimming. Don't want to be swimming in here. We don't want to be swimming. But you pick your course, pick the track, it's doable. I'm confident it's doable. That's the only way we're going to get back through. You got to hold the gas on, brother. Oh, full noise. No button off. Right. Just hold the throttle. <laughs> OK. Here we go. Now, looking back at our run, we were aiming for the smoother water to the side. But as we entered the current, it shot us 10 metres sideways in less than a second. Not a nice feeling, and it wasn't over yet. Out of nowhere, a huge whirlpool forms in front of us. And as we plough in, the boat lays right over and loses drive. Just between you and me, I was more than a touch worried. 
If the hull had dug in just a bit more, we would have taken on water over the side and the boat could have flipped. Simon and I would have been in the drink along with crocs and sharks and it would have been the end of our Kimberley adventure. So we won't be doing that again real soon. And that is the power of the horizontal waterfalls.